a very good morning friends today as i said it will be a kind of marathon so whatever class you have missed it <coughs> almost uh, means you may attend it see otherwise uh, attending the class twice is not so needed right sir fine see as it was almost uh, <coughs> given in the schedule we'll just start with this world climate sir sometimes you also call them as a climatic classification and analysis of the question already we have seen that quite a number of question come from this particular area they give you the character of a particular type of climate they'll be asking you that what exactly is this climate right sir not only upsc even other examination right when i talk about other premium means almost other examination even other examination this particular topic is very very important sir right now only thing is that what is the climate superficially we know right sir few classes we have not uh, taken this climatic classification and with the promise that we'll be taking in the later stage right at least uh, right it is good that i am taking before this preliminary examination sir right now when i talk about this climatic classification there are plenty of climatic classifications sir so as it is <coughs> means plenty of climatic classifications are there what we'll do we'll just go for this uh, simplest classification and the most accepted classification and uh, we are just uh, taking that of copen's classification sir so almost what we are seeing here is copen's classification but only one technical issue is there with copen sir copen has used alphabets for depict, uh, depicting a particular type of a climate even if you are there in ncert ncert gives you some alphabets suggesting that uh, this is a particular type of a climate right sir now what we'll do we'll not insist on this alphabet sir right only thing is that we'll be just taking or we'll be giving some names and how exactly we are <laughs> means we'll be giving this name we'll be taking the combined landmass of asia africa and europe sir so we'll be developing a grid and we'll be just overlapping this grid in asia europe and africa and whatever the name comes in we'll just take it sir otherwise i put it this way for naming purpose i have just taken the naming from gc leong sir so it's a combination of both now what is a climate we know sir to put it very simple climate is nothing but an atmospheric condition so when i talk about atmospheric condition two parameters or two conditions of atmosphere you talk about what are they one always we say it is temperature and two it is precipitation or resulted moisture sir any climate you take it the primary classification of the climate lies with these two parameters for example when i started or when we started with this chapter called as climatology means for examples we have taken for that for case sir, for that case if i talk about the equatorial type of a climate always we said when i talk about the character of equatorial type of climate we said it is nothing but hot and humid type of a climate sir. we have just justified hot stands for temperature and humid stands for the resulted precipitation what results in humidity is the precipitation right sir apart from equatorial type of climate when i talk about desert sir again we have taken one thing when i talk about desert tropical desert it is more of hot and dry type of a climate so what we are insisting here is again temperature and when i talk about precipitation or moisture this is what determines the dry nature so what we'll be doing in climatic classification or what copen has classified taken the basic parameter he has taken two sir that is temperature and precipitation he has taken it now we'll also almost take these parameters and we'll just try to develop one grid sir right what basis we are just developing a grid first we'll just substantiate without the temperature sir now comes the question whenever i talk about temperature what are the different parameters that determines the temperature of a particular place and one more thing always keep it in mind whenever i talk about uh, the climate climate is applicable only to the land sir we don't have a classification of climate in water so whenever i am just talking about climate i am talking about uh, that part of or that type of a climate which is there in the land area as such sir right if that is the case comes the question what are the different parameters or what are the different factors that determines the temperature in any part of a land undoubtedly the most important parameter is latitude because we know you increase the sign of latitude what happens to the temperature temperature decreases what is that reason we know it is all about angle of sun's rays there are plenty of reasons what affects the temperature but what is the primary reason is this latitude sir apart from latitude we also know temperature is affected by altitude but what we are doing here we are not taking into consideration of altitude what we are taking is only the consideration of latitude 
right sir only latitude we are taking it just because we are taking only that of latitude there are few shortcomings in it right sir so how to overcome the problems of shortcoming that also we'll see at the later stage sir so let me and this means let me almost let us come to a conclusion that when i talk about the temperature temperature is determined only by latitude so what we are doing entire earth sir if at all if i just talk about dividing entire earth into different latitudinal climate seven different types of climate we can almost divide into right only one hemisphere we are just taking for our consideration sir that is i am just taking the northern hemisphere even if you are just taking the southern hemisphere right it will work so what we are doing we are just dividing the entire earth into seven different latitudinal climate that is whatever lies between 0 degree and 10 degree the lowest possible latitude we call them as equatorial type of a climate so beyond equatorial type of a climate what extends till 30 degree practically speaking 30 degree but very technically speaking only till tropic of cancer and capricorn what we have is tropical type of a climate sir now beyond this tropical type of a climate we have a transitional type of a climate which separates true tropical and two tem temperate type of a climate you call them as a subtropical type of a climate and beyond this subtropical type of a climate we have this true temperate type of a climate i said subtropical is more of a transitional climate sir few books says this is subtropical type of a climate few books says they are warm temperate sir so logic says whatever is the extension of temperate latitude in a warmer region you call them as a warm temperate sir so it means it goes by different name but logically speaking right you can call it as a subtropical type of a climate or you can also call it as a warm temperate type of a climate sir right so what lies between 45 degree and 60 degree you call them as temperate and beyond it we have taiga type of a climate and logic also says if you can almost call this subtropical type of a climate as warm temperate taiga can also be called as a cold temperate sir again logic says whatever you extend the temperate land into the colder region you call them as a cold temperate right sir beyond it we have a type of a climate called as tundra and beyond tundra we have a climate called as a polar sir true polar that is completely frosted sir true polar sometimes also called as frosted type of a climate permafrost so these are the seven latitudinal climate what we are dividing sir only based on one aspect that is latitude we are not taking into consideration of altitude right sir on one side we have justified the fact called as latitude now we have to take into consideration what we call it as a precipitation sir precipitation temperature we have justified now coming to precipitation each and every region receives a precipitation by some mechanism say for example whenever i talk about equatorial type of a climate we know for a fact that equatorial type of a climate is known for a very important or unique type of a rainfall you call them as a convectional rainfall right wherever you experience warm temperature throughout the year right you happen to find this convectional rainfall happening and technically speaking we also know the meaning of this word called as convection what is this convection rising. it is a, it can be rising or it can be subsiding as well said only rising convection can result in precipitation subsiding convection can never result in precipitation this is one put it very simple convection is vertical movement of an air mass so whenever i talk about equatorial type of a climate what we have is only convection hardly we have any advection so we do not have any advection put it very simple equatorial type of climate normally speaking we do not have wind right sir now wind is not bringing precipitation in equatorial region this is what the logic is all about right sir now when i go beyond equatorial region what i understand that <coughs> mechanism or that uh, almost that mechanism which brings precipitation largely to a particular place is wind sir now whenever i talk about wind sir whenever i talk about wind technically speaking what is wind we know sir what is wind 
any horizontal movement you call them as an wind. Horizontal movement of an air mass you call them as an wind. Right, sir. Now comes another question. Right, generally when I talk about wind, there are two types of winds, sir. One, you call them as onshore winds, sir. Two, you call them as offshore wind. Now, this is very basic. What is onshore and what is offshore? It is very, very basic. Taking a definition is not needed. Right, what is onshore wind? Right, a kind of a sea breeze, fantastic. It means what comes from the sea to the land on the shore. Right, you call them as an onshore wind. Off the shore? Off the shore, right, sir. Right, whatever moves from land to the sea, you call them as offshore, sir. Now, if that is the case, now comes an another question, sir. Which wind will be dry and which wind will be wet? Understanding says any onshore wind will normally be wet. Finest example, India itself experienced one finest onshore wind during the month of June to almost September, sir. You call them as a southwestern monsoon. This is nothing but an onshore wind, right, sir. And any offshore wind is generally dry. This is very, very logical. So any onshore wind is generally wet and any offshore wind is generally dry. Why offshore wind is dry? Because it is sourced from land. The source of moisture is not there. Right, sir. When I talk about onshore wind, it is sourced from water, sir. When I talk about offshore wind, they are sourced from land. Right, sir. Now, why we are insisting on this point in the sense, when I talk about the tropical, subtropical and temperate type of a climate, what brings precipitation to a particular place is this mechanism called as wind. If I have onshore wind, this place will be wet. If I have offshore wind predominant, this place will be dry. Right, sir. If that is the case, tropical, temperate and subtropical region, sorry, <coughs> tropical, subtropical and temperate region is the place where I have a difference between land and water. Equatorial region, I don't have a difference between land and water. Because whether you are there in the land or whether you are there in the water, what you experience is a rising convection, sir. Right. But when I talk about the land that exists between uh, the 10 degree and 60 degree mark, right, land water divide is the one which makes the difference. Right. If that is the case, right, we can divide this land into three different categories. You take a complete land mass and you can divide into three categories. That is what lies in the eastern side of the continent. You call them as east margin. Understanding says it is eastern side of the continent. What lies in the western side of the continent? You call them as west margin. And what lies in between? You call them as continental interiors. You call them as continental interiors. Right. Smaller sized land. Whenever I have very small piece of land, continental interiors may not work. Right, sir. Only if I have a very large sized continents, this continental interiors will work. For example, this continental interiors will work in the case of North America, South America, Asia, or I put this way, it means whenever I have a very large land mass, this continental interiors will work, sir. Right. So any continent you take, we can divide this continent into three unequal segments. Right, sir. So that is, uh, you divide into three, that is eastern side of the continent, western side of the continent, and what lies Away from the coastline, you call them as a continental interiors. And we are selecting such that both the side of this land lies some ocean or some sea, sir. It can be an ocean or it can be a sea. So this is how we are just developing the grid, sir. Right, sir. Now, when I talk about a taiga type of a climate, again, taiga is a place where wind may not play a very important role. Or I put it this way. Though I have the mechanism called as wind, normally I do not encounter any wind called as onshore and offshore. If at all, if I don't experience anything called as onshore and offshore wind, again, I don't have this land and water divide. Because for the fact I know, when I talk about taiga, what type of precipitation is very, very common in taiga? You call them as a frontal precipitation, sir. We know that somewhere at 60 degree, a climatic front is created, sir. A climatic front is created. So front, along the front, I have this warm air mass which rises and any rise of an air mass will normally result in condensation followed by a precipitation. Though this rise is resulted by westerlies, right, one thing we know, 
we don't have anything concept of any concept of onshore and offshore whether you're over land or whether you're over water right what we understand in the sense generally this warm westerlies races so again taiga is a place where we do not have this classification of onshore and offshore if that is the case i don't have anything called as east margin and west margin right completely one latitudinal type of climate we are taking it so beyond taiga i have tundra and polar this is the place where normally what you experience is subsiding convection throughout the years so what you experience is a subsiding convection throughout the year right sir again you do not have the concept of wind here right sir so indirectly what we have done here is very simple entire landmass or any particular piece of land we have just divided into 13 different or 13 different zones sir one equatorial type of climate three tropical three subtropical three temperate taiga tundra and polar totally we have 13 different types of climate right sir these are the 13 different types of climate what we normally take it and what we almost consider that these are the major types of the climate sir only thing is that we have to give some name to it right sir now what we'll do this grid is very important will be only giving the names for this grid whatever the cells are there in the grid we'll just give names for it sir complete piece what we have taken we have just considered or we have just taken some land sir some land such that both side of this land i have an ocean and that land what i have taken is asia africa and europe sir if you are there in your world political map or physical map sir So we have just developed a grid and what we have done only thing is that we are just going to select a piece of land for the purpose of assigning some names. So what I have done, I have just taken the continuous landmass of Asia, Europe and Africa, only the northern part of Africa I am just taking so that only in one hemisphere we are putting ourselves in and we have selected in such a way that it means both sides I have an ocean and almost continuous landmass I have. The combined landmass of Asia, Africa and Europe very popularly it is called as world island sir. According to human geography concept it is called as a world island. I means major part of this world island we are just taking it just for giving some names for it sir. Now, right. Already we have just divided this world climate into different almost latitudinal climate. What lies between this 0 degree and 10 degrees and 10 degree we were calling it as an equatorial type of a climate 10 degree to 30 degree we were calling it as a tropical type of a climate 30 degree to 45 degree we were calling it as a subtropical type of a climate 45 to 60 we were calling it as a temperate type of a climate beyond it we have taiga tundra and polar sir this is what we have taken and we have just considered as sir. so equatorial type tropical type subtropical type temperate taiga tundra and polar sir now equatorial type and beyond taiga we don't have a problem because taiga tundra and polar they are latitudinal type of climate only what lies between them we are supposed to give some name for it sir so starting from this tropical land sir if i just start dividing this tropical land into different types say for example this is the landmass i'm just dividing into three unequal parts sir. what lies in the east what lies in the west and what lies in the continental interior let me almost call it as east west and continental interiors 
now only thing is that very carefully we have to assign some names sir for example you are there in tropical latitudes that lies between 10 degree and 30 degree right you are there in the eastern side of this landmass what are the countries you come across here at least i come across countries like india i come across countries like southeast asia etc right sir if that is the case what type of climate does india and southeast asia generally almost they experience you call them as monsoon right accordingly this type of climate is called as monsoonal type of a climate so it's only things that we are just giving a name for it right sir. now similarly you are there in the western side of the continent almost you are there in northern parts of africa this is the place where you have the largest desert of the world called as sahara sir so accordingly when i start giving the name for the climatic classification what lies in the tropical latitudes towards the western side you call them as desert not only here wherever you are there in whichever continent you are there in at this particular location you will be finding a desert right so exactly between this monsoon type of a climate and desert type of a climate the land what we have selected lies arabian seas right and we know the fact that it means generally when i talk about any water body climate is not applicable right sir and one more thing when i talk about closed water body climate may be applicable arabian sea is more of an open water body right sir so we do not have a climatic classification in the land what we have selected but elsewhere when i talk about a tropical continental interiors we have a very important type of a climate you call this as savanna sir you call them as a savanna right sir so similarly going to subtropical type of a climate now you are there in subtropical climate again we are just dividing into unequal parts sir that is what lies in the west what lies in the east so when i talk about east we are there in this country called as china accordingly this type of climate is called as china type of a climate if you are there in the west we have this marginal water body called as mediterranean sea and a very important type of a climate you call them as mediterranean type of a climate sir and what lies exactly between them if you are there in africa sorry excuse me if you are there in asia sir if you are there in asia somewhere here somewhere here you can find a number of deserts but slightly different from the tropical deserts these deserts are called as cold deserts sir these are called as cold deserts sometimes also called as tropical desert finest example if you are there in asia right we have almost deserts like gobi we have deserts like taklamakan all these are cold deserts sir again another place where you find a desert right sir and finally if you are there in temperate latitudes again you can divide into eastern side you can divide into western side and what lies between them you call them as continental interiors now if you are there in the western side of the continent what you find is the majority of europe sir majority of europe right and particularly you also find the islands like united kingdom or great britain sir so accordingly when i talk about this type of a climate what lies in the west either you call them as european type of a climate or sometimes it is also called as a british type of a climate right sir and similarly if you are there in the eastern side if you are there in the eastern side you find a plain region in china sir almost you find a plain region right almost you are there either in russia or the northern parts of china this plain is very popularly called as manchurian plain sir accordingly this type of climate is called as manchurian type of a climate sometimes also called as laurentian type of a climate sir it's also called as a laurentian type of a climate the other name of manchuria you call them as laurentian type of a climate and what lies exactly between this manchurian type and european type is again a very famous <coughs> grassland of the world you call them as steppe sir you call them as a steppe right sir now almost all the types of the climate we have assigned the names for it only thing is that now it's time to know about the very important feature of these types of climates so these are the 13 different types of climate what is very very popular and again when it comes to the examination always we say all climates are not so important generally we feel that equatorial is very important savanna is important desert is important mediterranean is important to the first order sir and when i talk about the others to some extent taiga steppe british type of a climate is also important further if you want to extend 
right to some extent let us also know about the cold desert only the locational aspect of the cold desert so all types of the climate is not so important and every climate is known for some unique set of features So we have developed a grid, 13 different types of climates are there in the grid. How exactly we have developed this grid, that also we know. We have selected a land such that this land has eastern side or eastern margin and western margin and substantial continental interiors are there and one hemisphere we have just taken it and only thing is that this grid you can overlap with any continent and a particular type of a climate will be applicable provided if you have sufficient land mass in it. This is number one. And number two, if you want to apply this grid to the southern hemisphere, you just reverse the grid. You just take the mirror image of the grid, flip it, you reverse it, right sir, you flip it vertically, right, you can apply it for the southern hemisphere, right sir. So one by one, we'll just see, just go for means, almost we'll just go for this decreasing order of this type of climate and very important type of climate we'll start with. And we'll just start with the most important type of a climate. You call them as equatorial type of a climate. Sir. Now, where we have this equatorial type of a climate, we have an idea. Logic says or grid says, any land that lies between 0 degrees, excuse me, 0 degree to 10 degree, taking the mirror image of it, 10 degree south to 10 degree north, whatever land mass you encounter, you experience this equatorial type of a climate. Sir. Now, if you are there in your world political maps, if you are there in the world political map, approximately you can see that what are the different countries of the world which lies in equatorial type of a climate. Very limited number of countries lies in this equatorial type of a climate. And one clarification, all the countries which is lying in equator may not experience equatorial type of a climate. For example, finest example, you can put yourself in map of South America, sir. If you are putting yourself in map of South America, you can directly go to the map of South America, detailed map of South America. There is a country called as Equator. Sir. You have a country, this country is named as Equator. The reason for naming this country as Equator itself is very simple because Equator passes through this country. Right, sir. Now comes another question. Country is called as Equator, but Equator do not experience equatorial type of a climate. Any reason why? Answer is very simple. It is not west or east margin because I understand 10 degree north to 10 degree south. Right, we do not have anything, con means any concept called as east and west. Because I don't have anything called as land and water divide. Right, sir. The reason why Equator do not experience equatorial type of climate is altitude, sir. What we have taken is only latitude. This is where the applicability of the grid is almost, is almost lies. When I talk about this grid, this grid can be applied only in plains, not in plateau and mountains. Right, sir. Low altitudinal plateau, you can apply it. But you cannot apply this grid in mountainous region. Right, sir. Because when I talk about Equator, one thing I understand, you increase the sign of latitude, what happens to the temperature? I know temperature decreases. Right, it is not only that increasing latitude, you also increase the altitude, then again temperature decreases. Right, sir. Equator is another place where you are increasing altitude and thus the temperature decreases. That's the reason why you do not have equatorial climate in Equator. Not only that, many places. For example, even if you are there in countries like Kenya, if you are there in Africa, you may find Kenya. Kenya do not experience equatorial type of a climate. Right, again, the reason, physical map of Africa, you have the reason for it. What can be the potential reason for it? It is altitude zone. So when I talk about Kenya, Kenya is almost located in a higher altitude. It is located in a plateau region, sir, elevated structure. Right. So again, clarification says this grid works only in a plain region or low altitudinal, sorry, low altitudinal plateau. Right, sir. So with the word of caution, 
if you are back in your world political map, wherever the mountain comes in, you can eliminate it. So apart from that, you can see number of countries where you experience this equatorial type of a climate. Some of the very important countries, if you want, you can note it down, sir. Number one, it is Brazil, sir. Known for its sir. equatorial type of climate par excellence, Brazil. Apart from Brazil, it is both the Congos of Africa. You have two Congos. One you call them as Democratic Republic of Congo, another simply you call them as a Congo, sir. Both the Congos of Africa. And when you are there in Asia, sir, when you are there in Asia, when I talk about one country near completely almost confining itself to equatorial region, you are there in Indonesia, sir. You are there in Indonesia. Right, sir. Now, you can come to map of Asia, taking a very close look. Taking a very close look, what are the countries that almost has their presence in equatorial region? One Indonesia, we have taken it. Right, sir, apart from Indonesia, you can put yourself in the political map so that the countries can be identified, sir. One, you are there in Indonesia, sir. Apart from Indonesia, you can also find few other countries which experience this equatorial type of a climate. You may also include Malaysia, sir. And you can also include the city country of the world or city state of the world. You can also include countries like Singapore, sir. Singapore lies very close to equator, par excellence. So these are some of the countries in Asia which experience equatorial type of a climate. You can also include countries like Maldives. Right, sir. So some of the countries in the world which experience equatorial type of a climate, we have an idea. And whenever you are there in equatorial type of a climate, it is known for hot and humid type of a climate, sir. It is known for hot and humid type of a climate. Right, sir. Why hot we know? What is the reason you experience hot temperature throughout the year? Because you know, equatorial region is the one which experiences high sun position throughout the year, sir. Now, what is this high sun position? Almost you experience the vertical sun's rays throughout the year. Right, most of the time you have this head sun position or high sun position throughout the year. More is the angle of sun's rays in the sky. Right, we can understand the temperature almost gets concentrated. Right, or the insulation gets concentrated, temperature will be very high. Right, one line we have just taken, high sun position throughout the years. Right. And not only that high sun position and high temperature throughout the year, one thing we know, right, this is also known for heavy precipitation, sir. It's known for its heavy precipitation. And to qualify it, we can say, this is one region in the world which experienced precipitation throughout the years. It experienced precipitation throughout the year. So very carefully, I am just selecting this word, almost every day, sir. And further, if you want to qualify it, you can also say, that it is well distributed. This precipitation is well distributed. Now comes the question, what is this well distributed? It means you do not have anything called as wet month. You do not have anything called as dry month. This is what you call them as precipitation throughout the year. Every month I have some precipitation. Right, sir. When I use this word called as well distributed, almost every month happens or records almost a similar type of precipitation or sorry, similar amount of precipitation it receives. You do not have varying fluctuation of precipitation between different months, right? The variation is very, very less, right, sir? So let me almost <coughs> reiterate this word precipitation throughout the year and it is well distributed, sir. And when I talk about the annual amount of precipitation it is more than 300 centimeters, right, sir? And just to tell you that this is the wettest climate in the world, sir. 
I'm not saying that this is the wettest location of the world. I'm just saying that this is the wettest climate in the world. Among the 13 different types of regional climate, this is the wettest climate, sir. Right, sir. So high sun position throughout the year. Thus, you have, you experience high temperature throughout the year and precipitation also throughout the year and such that every day it almost precipitates and this precipitation is very popularly called as 4 o'clock showers, sir. Just to tell you that only it means this shower is very common in evening or generally afternoon, sir. Now, temperature is also high, sir. When I talk about equatorial region, temperature is also high. Precipitation is also high. Because we said that this is the wettest climate in the world. So precipitation and moisture is very, very high. And high sun position, temperature is also very high. Insulation is also very high. So whenever I have high temperature and high precipitation, one thing I understand, this will automatically result in, almost resulting in evergreen forest, sir. Sometimes you also call them as a rainforest. You call them as a rainforest. If you want to qualify it, it is also called as equatorial rainforest. Sometimes also referred as tropical rainforest. Now again, we have a relation between climate, vegetation and biome. Right, reiterating this point, slightly deviating. See, for example, most of the time you would have come across a biome called as tundra, a biome called as taiga. Climate is also taiga, vegetation is also taiga, biome is also taiga. Right. If that is the case, we have a very close relation between these three concepts, sir. What exactly is the relation that also we will see? For example, on one side, if I talk about climate versus vegetation versus biome, they are very closely related because what determines is one. For example, what determines biome is a vegetation, what determines vegetation is a biome. Sorry, excuse me, climate. Right, sir. When I talk about climate, only two parameters of this or only two conditions of atmosphere, you take it, you regard it, you call it as a climate. That always we know it is about temperature and precipitation, sir. Now, along with the temperature and precipitation, now comes the question, what determines the vegetation of a particular place? It is all about the soil factor, sir. So, climate along with the soil factor will determine the vegetation, right? What type of a vegetation a particular place is almost known for. Now comes the question biome, right? All life put together, you call them as a biome, right? It is vegetation, right? Climate and the flora and fauna of a particular place, you call them as a biome, complete, right? Set of life on all form, you call them as a biome, sir. Now comes the question, what is biome then, right? What is biome? Biome is determined by vegetation, but also biome is determined by the density of both the flora and fauna, sir. Right, this is what the relation I have between climate, vegetation and biome. Vegetation is determined by climate and biome is determined by vegetation. That's the reason most of the time, either you call them as a climate, vegetation or biome, they take similar names in it. Right, sir. Now, we'll also see that how exactly climate and biome is almost related factually, sir. For example, whenever I talk about climate, whenever I talk about climate, slightly I am just leaving behind this temperature for a minute. Let me assume or let me categorize climate only on the basis of precipitation, sir. If I am just dividing this climate based on precipitation, I can divide this climate into four categories. One, you call them as Par moist climatic condition. So technically speaking, any climate which receives more than 200 centimeter, you call them as par moist. Name itself says it is very, very wet. Par moist means very wet. Sir. Sometimes this par moist climatic climate is also, sorry, par moist is also called as humid type of a climate. Sir. So any climate which receives more than 200 centimeter, you call them as par moist. Now when I talk about another type of a climate, you call them as moist sometimes also called as subhumid type of a climate. Now, what is this moist or subhumid? By values, any region which receives between 100 to 200 centimeters of precipitation, you call them as moist, sir. 
sometimes if this precipitation amount is anywhere varying between 50 centimeter to 100 centimeter you call them as arid type of climate excuse me semi arid type of a climate and less than 50 centimeter you call them as arid type of a climate sir. so it means based on precipitation we may have four different types of climate only based on precipitation par moist moist semi arid arid technically speaking layman's understanding very wet wet dry and very dry right sir only thing is that we are just almost making it between wet and dry sir moist condition is generally you call them as wet par moist condition you call them as very wet semi arid condition you call them as dry and arid condition you call them as very dry this is just for our understanding what are the four different types of climate only based on precipitation now climate plays a very important role in determining biomes again when i talk about biome generally we come across four different types of biomes that is two forest biome you come across one you call them as evergreen forest sir two you call them as a deciduous forest third type of biome you call them as grasslands fourth type of biome you call them as desert generally they say two sorry three type of biome they say call it as one forest grassland and desert but only thing is that we are classifying the forest itself into two further categories that is evergreen forest and deciduous forest name itself says what is evergreen and deciduous what is evergreen or what may be this evergreen right throughout the year this forest will have its green cover right not even a single day that entire forest will lose its green cover right it means we know that it means means tree has this tendency to shed its old leaves and almost have the rejuvenated leaves as such right sir and when i talk about this evergreen forest forest as such will not lose its green cover at any given day of the year right that's the reason you call them as evergreen whichever part of the year you are there in the leaf or the canopy of the forest will be maintained you call them as evergreen sir now what is this deciduous name itself says some part of the year the complete forest together may shed its leaf complete forest may become bald right sir this is what you call them as deciduous forest right sir and when i talk about grasslands i understand what is a grassland normally you don't have trees in this particular region right you will be having different means almost heighted grasses right tall heighted and short heighted grasses you call them as a grassland and of course desert is a drier region sir so these are the four types of biome in general we have a biome sir now what is the link between this climate and biome generally when you have a par moist climatic condition what you will experience is a evergreen forest sir sometimes also called as a rain forest when i talk about moist or humid type of a climate what you experience is a deciduous type of a forest whenever you come across semi arid type of a climate what is very prevalent type of a vegetation you come across is a grassland and of course deserts are located along the arid location this is what the relation between the climate and the biome we have so if you know that what type of a climate you experience that type of a forest or that type of a biome can be identified sir right right now reason for this deviation almost in one almost analysis we know that what type of a biome will be present where sir now taking this knowledge and applying the same in equatorial region sir right if you are just applying the same in equatorial region what type of a biome or forest you will be looking for already we have done it it is evergreen forest sometimes also you call them as a rain forest now among the places what we have selected you come across two very important places sir. one you call them as amazon basin sir you are there in brazil in your map amazon is not given but selvas is given selvas is just part of amazon or at least in your map you may find the entire course of the river called as amazon the majority of this course the near complete course the long profile of this river is confined to this amazon basin sir the world's largest equatorial rainforest you are there in brazil brazil is there in south america
it's called as Amazon Basin or according to your atlas it is called as Selvas. So whatever names comes in the examination you can go for it. Even if they are asking Selvas you can go for it. Just clarification say Selvas is just a part of this Amazon Basin or Amazon Rainforest. Sir. Almost you are there in the central part of Brazil. Right sir. Now if you are there in Africa you may find a similar name. Now the name is given. It is called as sir, Congo Basin sir. It is called as Congo Basin. You are there in Africa. Again, the second largest equatorial rainforest of the world is this Congo Basin. Right. So apart from these two prominent rainforest or equatorial rainforest, all others are very small. For example, when I talk about Malaysia, Indonesia, Earlier we had this equatorial rainforest but completely man-made deforestation or anthropogenic deforestation has completely removed this equatorial rainforest and it was replaced now by plantation crops. Right. Now when I talk about Malaysia and Indonesia, right, we do not have extensive rainforest. Right. Now what is very important when I talk about cases like India, some region of India also experienced this equatorial rainforest. And one more clarification when I talk about India, Few places of India has this rainforest, right? Only one place in India has equatorial rainforest. Now putting yourself in map of India, a slight clarification. When I talk about equatorial type of climate, one particular region in India experiences equatorial type of a climate, sir. If you are there in India. Which part of India experiences equatorial type of a climate? You are there in Nicobar Islands. Though this complete archipelago is called as Andaman and Nicobar, what I understand, we have two groups of islands here. The northern group you call them as Andaman group and southern group you call them as Nicobar group. So northern group, for example, when I talk about this Andaman and Nicobar group, very popularly we know that we have a very famous water channel which is dividing this Andaman and Nicobar. You call them as sir, 10 degree channel, sir. You call them as 10 degree channel. And we also know that this 10 degree channel is nothing but a 10 degree north latitude and which is the almost limiting line of equatorial region. Right, sir. If that is the case, whatever lies south of this 10 degree north. Right. Like Nicobar Islands, we have perfectly this equatorial type of a climate. Right. If I specifically insist on equatorial rainforest, sir, where in India we have equatorial rainforest, undoubtedly it is Nicobar, sir. Undoubtedly it is Nicobar. Now, slightly changing my almost orientation, if I say rainforest in India, what are the different places in India which experience rainforest? Few other places you can add, right? That is one. Entire Andaman and Nicobar Island, I can add it. Apart from Andaman and Nicobar Island, you are there in northeastern states and you are there in Konkan and Malabar Plains or you can say western side of western Ghats. So there is a slightly a difference in orientation. If I insist on equatorial rainforest, it is only Nicobar Islands. If I say it is rainforest in general or tropical rainforest, you can add all these names. Sir where northeastern state comes in, entire Andaman and Nicobar comes in, and of course, you are also there in the western side of Western Ghats. Right, so some of the very important features of equatorial rainforest we have seen. And whenever I talk about the unique nature, we have not touched the unique nature. What is so unique about equatorial region or equatorial type of a climate where other type of climate do not experience somewhere you can write it very very important right no season cycles the only climate in the world where you do not have a season is equatorial type of a climate what is the reason for it you know because every day it is almost every day what you experience is an equinox at equator there is no season cycle. When I talk about the length of the day, see what is summer, what is winter, we know. When I talk about summer, how exactly we define or we describe a summer? 
Summer is longer days. Summer is not almost, it is associated with temperature. It is associated. But what is very primary defining character of a summer is longer days. Right. If the length of the day is almost equal, almost every day of the year, I understand there is no summer, there is no winter, there is no autumn, there is no spring. That's the reason one line we said, there is no season cycle, sir. And just because we do not have season cycle, the offshoot of it, you can say, that climate which experiences the minimum annual range of temperature, sir. The entire continent or entire world, that climate which experiences minimum annual range of temperature. See, only if I have summer and winter, summer temperature will be high and winter temperature will be less. The so-called annual range of temperature will be maximum. I don't have summer, I don't have winter. If that is the case, annual range of temperature will be very, very minimum, sir. Right, and this annual range of temperature is not more than 5 degrees centigrade, sir. Up to 5 degrees centigrade, you can take it. So this annual range of temperature is not more than 5 degrees centigrade. Right, sir. So let me consolidate all the facts what we have taken. Equatorial type of a climate, very important. The defining factor or the most unique character, there is no season cycle. Right, when examiner talks about this particular character, undoubtedly you can go for equatorial type of a climate. Even last year questions we have just analyzed, right, examiner says almost every day is more or less same. That itself gives you an idea that they are talking about equatorial type of a climate. Right, sir. High sun position throughout the year. Right. And if I talk about the humidity, humidity is also very, very high. So that's the reason you call them as a hot and moist type of a climate or hot and humid type of a climate, excuse me. But as the case, it is known for its rainforest in general, very particularly called as equatorial rainforest. Almost every day it precipitates. And what is very important, it is well distributed. Precipitation throughout the year and it is well distributed, sir. Right. These are some of the very defining character of equatorial type of a climate, sir. Now. From equatorial type of a climate, moving to the second important type of a climate, you call them as a tropical deserts, sir. See, whenever we are talking about desert, only three aspects we'll just address. Now, one, we'll talk about what is a desert. We'll just say that what exactly is a desert, right? What is the definition of a desert? Now comes another question, right? Where is the desert? And finally, we'll just also say that why this place is a desert. Only all this WH questions we'll just answer. What, where, and why. Right, sir. Now, in this regard, when I talk about a desert, technical definition of a desert says, otherwise somewhere you can take it, any place which receives, any place which receives less than 30 centimeters of annual precipitation, any place which receives less than 30 centimeters of annual precipitation and which is not dependable and which is not dependable is called as desert. You forget about this word called as not dependable. At least technically we are just taking only one parameter. That is any place which receives less than 30 centimeter you call them as a desert. Right, sir. Now, Definition wise, this is what a desert means. So put it very simple. Desert simply means a dry location. Desert simply means an arid location where precipitation is very less. Just because precipitation is very less, vegetation is minimum. Right, sir. Now, what is a desert? We have an idea. Now comes the question, where is the desert? Any tropical landmass. If I'm just putting myself in any tropical landmass, say I'm just between this 10 degree and 30 degree of any continent. And if you're there located on the western side of the continent, sir, if you're there in the west margin of the continent, right, you happen to find a desert. That's the reason this tropical desert is sometimes also called as a tropical west margin type of a climate, sir. Now, what is west margin? You know now. Western side of the continent, you call them as west margin. Right. So, any continent you're putting yourself in, you'll be finding a desert here. Right, sir. For example, if I just want to talk about these deserts locations, if you're there in North America, map of North America, a very small desert you encounter, you're there in Northern Hemisphere, you're there in North America, 10 degree to 30 degree, you're there in the western side of the continent, almost leaving this 
rocky as a mountain or western cordillera as a mountain you are confining yourself to the coastal margins you are there in this country called as mexico sir along the coastal margins of mexico parallel to galif means the californian gulf gulf of california there you can find a desert if you are there in north america not so prominent but still a desert this desert is called a sonoran desert sir a very small desert you are there in south america sir now putting yourself in south america now 10 degree south to 30 degree south you are just almost reversing this grid take the mirror image flip it 10 degree south to 30 degree south right almost you are there in the physical map right you are there in the coastal margins completely leaving this andean cordilleras or andes only confining to the low latitudinal plains of the coast you are there in northern chile and peruvian coast sir you find one of the very important deserts of the world which is considered to be one of the driest tropical desert of the world you come across this desert called as atacama sir you are there in northern chile sir you are there in northern chile and i insist on this point this is the driest tropical desert there are plenty of deserts in the world but among the tropical deserts this is the driest again what is the reason why this almost this desert is driest later we have an answer we have a current called as peru current that current which almost induces this mechanism called as el nino and la nina sir right now two continents two deserts we have identified and if you are there in africa sir while constructing the locational aspect we have taken this desert the largest desert of africa you call them as sahara now comes another question generally when i talk about deserts deserts are confined only to the western side of the continent right it means when i talk about sonoran desert only the western side of the sonoran desert means western side of mexico i have the sonoran desert right only western side of the continent i have when i talk about atacama desert again only the western side the coastal margins i have a desert but when it comes to africa what i understand that entire continent is a desert or entire northern africa is a desert now comes the question why why deserts are not confined only to the coastal margin why this desert is so extensive right you should remember now here we have not taken only africa as a land this is the combined land mass where till indian ocean or pacific ocean it extends sir if that is the case complete africa comes in the or it lies in the western side of the continent from your side it lies in the western side of the continent right sir here western margins are very very limited very small but when i talk about here the west is very very large because this is the combined land mass of asia what we have taken along with africa sir right combined land mass we have just taken it right sir this is what the clarification is all about so when i talk about the, the <coughs> deserts in northern part of africa complete northern part of africa you will find a desert but the same africa if you are almost identifying the desert in the southern part of africa now your logic is applicable only to the coastal margin you find a desert not in the eastern side not throughout the continent you find because one side i have indian ocean one side i have pacific ocean sir right now you are there in northern part of africa you have identified this desert this desert is called as sir, saharan desert sir and similarly if you are there in southern part of africa you may find few deserts now confining yourself to the coastal margins africa is one continent in the world where almost all three important lines passes through that is tropic of cancer equator and capricorn no other continents are there in the world where all three lines passes through this is one and number two this fact itself says that africa is almost divided equally in both the hemisphere right sir another hemisphere part of it and southern hemisphere part of it though not the size but the latitudinal positioning if you are there in southern part of africa sir some very important deserts you come across for example if you are there in countries like botswana sir you may find this desert called as sir, kalahari desert if you are there in namibia 
may find a Namib desert. Deserts like Kalahari and Namib, a very important deserts of southern parts of Africa, confining only to the coastal margins. Now, if you are there in Asia, where the extension of Saharan desert almost you experience, Saharan desert continues surpassing this Red Sea. Red Sea, both sides of Red Sea, what you have is the desert. That is another reason why Dead Sea is considered, sorry, excuse me, not Dead Sea, Red Sea. When I talk about Red Sea, both sides of Red Sea, what you have is a desert. That is one reason why Red Sea is one of the highest saline water bodies of the world. Among those water bodies which is connected with the open ocean. Right, sir. Now you are there in Red Sea, sir. Both sides of Red Sea. You are there in the eastern side of Red Sea. Now you are there in Asia. You may find the, this desert. This desert is called as Arabian Desert, sir. You are there in Arabian Peninsula, it is called as Arabian Desert. Otherwise, you also have a specific name, it is called as Rubal Kali, sir. You are there in Arabian Peninsula, you are, you are there in Saudi Arabia. Almost you are there in this Arabian Peninsula. Finally, if you are putting yourself in Oceania or particularly if you are there in Australia, you are there in Australia, Australia is that continent in the world where the percentage of desert is maximum, not even Africa, but Australia is that continent where the percentage of desert is very, very high, sir. Now you are there in Australia. Now, if you are there in Australia, what do you find? The western side of Australia, the majority of western side of Australia, you find that you come across deserts. Sir. Deserts like Great Sandy Desert. Deserts like Great Victorian Desert. And again, always we insist, whenever the names Great comes in, you are normally you are there in Australia. Right, sir. So, Great Sandy Desert, Great Victorian Desert, etc. Sir. Now, two things we have addressed. What is a desert? Where we have a desert? Countries and name of the desert is very, very important. When you come across great, go for Australia. Namib, country is Namibia. Right. What slightly changes when I talk about, uh, means <coughs> deserts like Kalahari, maybe you may remember it. Right. Kalahari is confined to the country called as uh, Botswana. Sir. Right. Few name of the countries can also be noted, sir. When I talk about Atacama, you are there in Northern Chile or Chile, you are there in Chile. Right, sir. Sonoran Desert, you are there in Mexico, sir. You are there in Mexico. Right, sir. So, what is a desert? Where we have a desert, we have an idea. Now, answering the final question, why this place is a desert? At least we have three reasons for it, sir. One, it is because of perennial effectivity of offshore trade winds, sir. It's a perennial effectivity of offshore trade wind. This is one. And number two, as most of the books claims, Desert is the permanent location of a high pressure. Desert is a permanent location of a high pressure. One by one, we'll just see what it is. And number three, it is influence of cold current. It is influence of cold current. So, three reasons we are just taking it. Decreasing order of importance. What makes this place as a desert? The most important reason is this. Offshore trade wind. Perennial effectivity of offshore trade wind. Number two, permanent location of high pressure. And three, it is influence of cold current. One by one, we will see what exactly right, uh, these sentences in general mean. Sir. Now, for example, I know that the tropical west margin, you call them as a desert. sir. 10 degree 
230 degree. Now imagine that you are there in northern hemisphere, sir. You are there in northern hemisphere, you are there in the western side of the continent. You are there in the western side of the continent, both sides I have an ocean. Right, sir. Now you are there in northern hemisphere. If you are there in northern hemisphere, 30 degree north, right, and the so called equatorial region, right, which prevailing wind is very common in this particular region, or I put way, 30 degree north, we have a pressure system. Right, what is this pressure system very popularly called as? You call them as a subtropical high. And similarly, when I talk about equatorial region, we have a pressure system and this pressure system is called as equatorial low. Always you know that wind flows between a high pressure and low pressure. And that wind which flows from the subtropical high to equatorial low, very popularly you call them as a trade wind. Now what is the flow direction of this trade wind? It is northeastern in direction, sir. It is northeastern in direction. Northeastern monsoon is nothing but northeastern trade. Right, sir. So this is what the flow direction of this wind. It is northeastern in nature. So what you have is a northeastern trade which is almost influencing the place of desert. Sir. Now comes another question. Is this wind an onshore wind or an offshore wind? Sir? It is an offshore wind because I understand this wind flows from land to ocean or sea. Sir. So what I understand this northeastern trade is an offshore wind. Sir. And one thing I know any offshore wind generally they are dry winds. Sir. Because they cannot bring the moisture in it. Only if source is there, it can collect the moisture, it can bring the moisture and deliver the moisture elsewhere. Right. Either you should have forest, because when I talk about forest, there is a process called as transpiration. Transpiration will be adding as the right, moisture source. Right. Forest, water or moisture can be collected. Or if you are there in any water body, this moisture can be collected. Right. If you do not have a means water body, if you do not have a forest, this moisture cannot be collected. Right, sir. Now we have the answer for it. What is the statement one? Now I have an understanding. Desert comes under the perennial effectivity of offshore trade wind. Perennial. Throughout the year, it experiences the prevailing wind of a trade wind. Right. And this trade wind is offshore, sir. Right. So what makes a desert? The most important fact is this trade wind. And the nature of this trade wind being offshore, sir. Even if you are there in southern hemisphere, the same trade wind will be offshore. But southern hemisphere, the flow direction of a trade wind is southeastern in fashion, sir. Right. We have just justified that what is the means, almost meaning of this offshore trade wind, sir. Now coming to the second factor, we say that the desert is a permanent location of a high pressure. Sometimes it may be confusing because for example, whenever I talk about desert, slightly moving to the second point, whenever I talk about desert, sir, what is the temperature we experience in a desert? Normally you say you experience high temperature because even when I talk about the hottest place in India or the hottest city or town in India, we have a place called as Jaisalmer. Jaisalmer is the hottest place in India. Now comes the question, where is this Jaisalmer? Jaisalmer undoubtedly you are there in Rajasthan and it is almost you are there in the central part of a desert. Now if you are putting yourself in map of India, you may identify where is Jaisalmer. Very near to almost India and Pakistan border, you are there in Rajasthan. Just see in world India political map whether Jaisalmer is given. If not, you can go to the regional map of Rajasthan. If you are there in the regional map of Rajasthan, second map from your map of India, the first map comes in the name of Jammu and Kashmir, then you have Rajasthan and Gujarat, sir. Now, if you are there in Rajasthan map, political map of Rajasthan, you may find Jaisalmer as a place, sir. Now comes the question, right, Jaisalmer is the hottest place, logic is very simple because Jaisalmer is located on the almost the heart of this desert, India also has a tropical desert, you call them as a Thar desert. Right, sir. Now, any place which is located in a desert, I understand the temperature is very high, sir. Temperature is very high. 
Now comes the question, if temperature is very high, high temperature, what should be the resultant pressure system, sir? Low pressure. Generally, when I talk about low pressure, any low pressure is normally known for its wet condition. See, whenever I talk about pressure and moisture, pressure and moisture or pressure and precipitation relations, let me assume that this is pressure and precipitation relation. What relation pressure and precipitated precipitation normally almost has? One, whenever I talk about high pressures, high pressure is always associated with the dry condition. Right. Exceptional case, very exception or very means very minor exception we have, where sometimes high pressure may also result in precipitation, but otherwise, right, high pressure is associated with dry condition. Now comes another question. That's the reason sometimes we say, whenever I talk about high pressure, which is prevailing in the surface, sir, assume that you are there in the surface. High pressure is a zone of divergence. Right. Now comes the question, what results in high pressure? Is subsiding convection. It is subsiding convection. Right, sir. Subsiding convection. So whenever you have a subsiding convection, whenever I have a convection which is almost subsiding in nature, right, you do not have the avenue of precipitation. Right, so that's the reason we said rising convection will result in precipitation, not subsiding convection. Because subsiding convection results in high pressure, high pressure is known for dry condition. Rising convection results in low pressure, low pressure is known for right, wet condition. Right. So put it very simple, any high pressure is known for dry condition. And what results in high pressure is subsiding convection. Now comes another question. If that is the case, what will be the precipitation relation with respect to low pressure? Whenever I have low pressure, what is very common you can experience? Wet condition. Wet condition is very common. Sometimes you also have the condition of being dry. Right, sir. But what is very common which is associated with the low pressure is wet condition. Now comes another question. Can you have a dry season right, when you have a high temperature? This is what this means almost question is about. Right, sir. If I have, for example, when I talk about seasons in India itself, I can divide seasons of India into four different categories, sir. You call them as dry winter period. Slightly deviating. When I talk about seasons in India, sir. When I talk about seasons in India, four different seasons we have. One, you call them as dry summer, sorry, excuse me, you call them as dry winter period. Right, sir. Now, December, January, February, you call them as dry winter period. Now comes the question. Why it is dry? Because it is winter. Why it is winter? Right, because I have slanting sun rays or low sun position. Right. So, that's the reason we say almost winter or cold condition is normally associated with dryness, sir, or dry condition. Right. Winter is associated with cold condition, right sir. And cold condition is associated with high pressure, right sir. So normally I understand whenever I talk about winter, winter will be dry. Now comes another season. This season is called as dry summer period. Summer is associated with, when I talk about temperature, temperature is high, right sir. If temperature is high, I can have a low pressure. Right, sir. So this is a situation where low pressure is there, but precipitation is not there. Right, sir. So whenever I have the option of having a low pressure, then comes two options. Right, sir. Either it can be wet or it can be dry. But what is very common is this wet spell is very, very common, sir. Right. Low pressure, normally it is wet, but sometimes it can also be dry. But when I talk about high pressure, it is almost dry. Right. Or I would say slightly changing with the word, right, always it is dry, right, sir. Now to conclude India's season, dry winter we have taken it, dry summer we have taken it, the three more, two more season we have in India, one you call them as advancing monsoon, three. And finally you have this northeastern monsoon, what you popularly called as retreating monsoon, sir. Advancing monsoon is nothing but southeastern, sorry, southwestern monsoon. And retreating monsoon is nothing but northeastern monsoon. Sir. Now, four seasons in India, we have an idea. Dry winter, dry summer, advancing monsoon and retreating monsoon. Indian climate also will be almost doing it in the same day. Almost at the end of the day, we will be doing it, sir. Right. Now, coming back, 
to the desert. Almost having a relation between precipitation and pressure. Wherever I have a low pressure, what results in low pressure we know. Right, rising convection is the one which results in low pressure. Right, and any low pressure, I know that low pressure is a zone of convergence. Right, sir. So, rising convection results in low pressure, subsiding convection results in high pressure. Normally, high pressure is dry and low pressure is normally wet. Right, sir. So, pressure and precipitation relation, we have an idea. High pressure is known for dry condition and low pressure is known for wet conditions. Now, knowing this fact, we will just substantiate what exactly the statement 2 is talking about. Statement 2 says, desert is a permanent location of high pressure. Now, again, we know the relation between temperature and pressure systems. Sir. Whenever temperature is high, pressure is low. Whenever temperature is low, pressure is high, sir. Right, sir. Now comes the final almost aspect where the decision can be taken. For example, whenever I talk about a desert, desert gives you an idea that the desert is known for its hot condition. Now comes another question, how long this desert is hot? Sand has a property, sir. What is the property? For example, in a same continuum, almost I can place two things in two extremes, sir. One, one side I have water and one side I have sand. Between water and sand, somewhere I have land. Now, what is this continuum? It is all about fluctuation in temperature. Whenever I talk about water, water maintains temperatures. When I talk about water, water maintains temperature. Temperature is almost maintained in water. The fluctuation is not so great. Whenever I talk about annual range of temperature or diurnal temperature variation in water, hope I know, hope you understand both. What do you understand by diurnal or annual range of temperature? What, are you, what do I mean by diurnal temperature difference? Day means almost, yes, the day-night difference, the temperature variation within a day. Right, the range of temperature within a day, you call them as diurnal temperature. The same concept of a year, you call them as a annual range of temperature. So whenever I talk about water, water is that place where diurnal temperature or annual range of temperature is actually minimum. Sir. Now when I talk about desert, desert or sand is that part or sand has a property. What is the property of the sand? The sand can absorb the heat readily if the sun is not there in the sky or if you have this slanting sun's position. What is absorbed is readily re-radiated. Right, sir. It means the sand do not has that property of storing this heat in a permanent basis. So put it very simple. Heating up of sand takes no time and the sand loses its heat in no time, sir. Right, if that is the case, when I talk about sand, right, it experiences maximum fluctuation of temperature. Maximum fluctuation of temperature and particularly when I talk about diurnal temperature, diurnal temperature difference is maximum with respect to sand. Anywhere between water and sand lies that of a land, sir. Right, so where exactly I will be having maximum diurnal difference is sand. Right. What this desert is full of is this sand desert. So normally when I talk about deserts, deserts are known for its sand cover. Right, sir. So deserts gets heated up very readily. If sun is not there in the sky, right, desert loses its heat very, very readily. And whenever I talk about the hottest place, for example, you are there in a tropical latitude, morning time. Right. Which will be the hottest place? Undoubtedly, it is a desert. Right. Now you are there in a plains. You are there in summer. Which is the hottest place of a summer day? Desert, right, sorry, tropical latitude, undoubtedly it is a desert. Now comes another question. You are there in a tropical latitude, right, you are there in summer, but you are there during the night time, which is the coldest place? Again it is desert. That's the reason we said desert has the maximum diurnal temperature. So the same desert which is very, very hot during the morning is extremely cold during the night. Even during summers what happens, it can reach up to 50 degrees or 40, 45 degrees very normally during the daytime. It can drop to somewhere around 15 to 20 degrees during the night time. Almost it looks like that of a spring and autumn, right? But this is the character of a desert, right sir? Now, when I talk about desert, 
when i talk about high temperature in desert sir whenever i talk about high temperature in desert normally this high temperature in desert somewhere prevails between say somewhere around 10 am to 4 pm sir so whenever i talk about high temperature 10 am to 4 pm right this is what the temperature normally desert is known for higher temperature whenever i talk about cold conditions or lower temperature than the adjoining land mass it is from 4 pm to 10 am see very crude timing i am just talking about right but only thing is that i just want to quantify it whenever i talk about desert being hotter than all other location of the same latitude only 6 hours when i talk about desert being colder than all other places of the same latitude it is somewhere around 18 hours now comes the question right which is more long lived high temperature or low temperature low temperature is long lived whenever i talk about low temperature what is the pressure created now high pressure prevails for 18 hours and low pressure prevails only for 6 hours we are not denying the low pressure in desert but only we are just saying that desert is known for more permanent presence of a high pressure this is what statement 2 says right somewhere just for your clarification you can say low pressure in desert is short lived sir. Right, sir. So, what is making a desert? What facilitates the desert? Two reasons we have taken it. Why this place is a desert? One, perennial effectivity of offshore wind. There is no avenue of moisture laden wind encroaching this land. Completely, I have a land wind or a land breeze where almost every year or throughout the year what you experience is a dry wind. This is one. And number two, even if a low pressure is created in a desert, this low pressure is short lived. Before moisture laden wind reaches this low pressure, this low pressure becomes a high pressure. And very this phenomena is very very common in desert, particularly if you are there in summer sir. Right, particularly summer evening in desert, a extreme low pressure will be created at the very center of the desert. Right sir, now what this extreme or strong low pressure will start attracting the moisture laden wind from the adjoining sea sir. But what happens by the time this moisture laden wind reaches this low pressure, this low pressure becomes a high pressure. Right. This phenomena is very common in desert. You will be finding that wind is almost gushing towards some central point of the desert. But all of a sudden, this wind comes to an abrupt halt. Right. This suggests that low pressure has become a high pressure. Right, sir. Now, two reasons we have taken it. And finally, when I talk about the last reason what facilitates the desert, actually it does not facilitate a desert. It only the intensifies the arid condition. Influence of a cold current, sir. Again, whenever I talk about cold current, sir, any cold current, Whenever I talk about cold current, what is the influence of cold current on the adjoining land? It is a cold condition or cold temperature. Right, sir. It reduces the temperature of the adjoining land. Whenever temperature is reduced, what is the precipitate, sorry, pressure created? That is high pressure. So, wherever I have a high pressure, what you have is a dry or arid conditions. That's the reason normally we say cold currents are directly associated with dry condition. So, wherever you have a cold current, it is known for its dry condition. Wherever you have a desert, there all you will also find a cold current, sir. Directly putting yourself in this currents map of the world. See ocean currents, you are there in this map called as world climate. If you are there in world climate map, where pressure bells, wind, etc. is given, you will also find that the currents, ocean currents are given. Ocean currents plays a very important role in determining the climatic condition of the adjoining land, sir. So, when I talk about ocean currents, along all that desert what we have identified till now, you will find a cold current. Right, sir. For example, if I talk about Sonoran Desert, sir. 
If we talk about Sonoran Desert, what is the cold current which runs parallel to the Sonoran Desert? You have this. Uh, So there in Sonoran, you have this Californian current, sir. You have Californian current. When you are there along this Atacama Desert, you have Peru current, sometimes also called as Humboldt current. If you are there along Sahara, you have Canary current. If you are there along Kalahari and Namib, you are there along this Benguela current. If you are there along Asia, we don't have the currents along the Asia because what lies in the right, the coastal margins of Africa we have. If you are there in Australia, what you have is West Australian currents. So every desert, what we find is a cold current running along the coast. So whenever I have cold condition prevailing, pressure will be high pressure. Any high pressure will result in Right, dry condition. Now comes the question. Among the tropical desert, different tropical desert we have taken it. Right, among the following tropical desert, which desert is the driest tropical desert is Atacama. Sir. Now comes the question. Why Atacama is the driest? Because among all the current, the coldest current is Peruvian current. Sir. Among all the currents what we have taken so far, Right, among the current, the most coldest current is Peruvian current. Because Peruvian current is coldest current, Atacama Desert becomes the driest desert. Again, the reason for Peru current being the coldest current you have in your atlas itself. Which cold current is almost diverted from the highest possible latitude? If you are almost finding, it means which current is almost transferred from the highest possible latitude is this Peruvian current. Sir. Almost from 60 degrees south it is almost transferred. All other cold currents they are transferred only from 45 degree means south or somewhere around 40 degree south. Not as south or as high as Peruvian current. Sir. Right, sir. So, two very important types of climate we have talked about that is equatorial type of climate and tropical desert. Tropical desert, what is a desert? Where all we have a desert and why this place is a desert? Three things we have taken it. And when I talk about this place being a desert, two reasons I have which almost forms a desert. And when I talk about the influence of cold current, influence of cold current only intensifies the condition. Right. Already this place is a desert, it further intensifies this condition. Why do I say so is very simple. Everywhere where I have a cold current, I do not have a desert. But wherever I have a desert, I find this cold current. So understanding says cold current as such do not makes or it facilitates the formation of a desert, it just the intensifies the condition. Or I would say, desert is already dry. Whenever I have the influence of cold current, cold current, it further becomes dry. Right, sir. It just intensifies the aridity, sir. Right. So, from desert, moving on to the third type of climate, similarly important, you are still there in tropical latitudes. It is called a savanna, sir. It's called a savanna. Tropical continental interiors. We are there in tropical continental interiors. So any landmass that lies between 10 degree to 30 degree in both the hemisphere, the continental interiors, we call them as savannas. Now only few facts are there about savanna. Now when I talk about savanna, savanna is a grassland, sir. Savanna is a grassland. And this grassland is normally known for its tall heighted grass, sir. 
So when I talk about this tall heighted grass, sometimes this height of the grass can be as tall as 3 meters or 10 feet. Sir. Tall heighted grass. Completely a continuous grassland you come across. Sir. You call them as savanna. So this is how this savanna may normally look like, sir. Extensive grasslands, normally you call them as savannas. You may have trees, but very sporadic locations of the tree you may experience. Right, sir. Almost known for its short-heighted trees and others, the savanna is known for, sir. Now, since we have taken this word called as grassland, here itself you know that what will be the amount of precipitation, sir. Or precipitation classification, what exactly this grassland may almost encounter. Say, for example, it is located in a semi-arid region. Sir. So, whenever I talk about grasslands, normally I am talking about semi-arid region. So, wherever I have semi-arid region, the resultant biome, what we have is a grassland. Right, sir. So, whenever I talk about semi-arid, there itself you have the amount of precipitation. What can be the amount of precipitation? It is up to 100 centimeters. Another way of saying so. Right, sir. Up to 100 centimeters. Say, or you can write it in your own range. That is between this 50 degree to, sorry, 50 centimeter to 100 centimeter of precipitation. Right, sir. Now, when I talk about equatorial region, whenever I talk about equatorial region, one thing we said, precipitation is throughout the year. And whenever I say precipitation is throughout the year, this is not so common. Right. Whenever I talk about precipitation everywhere throughout the globe, right, only one season is known for its concentrated precipitation. Between summer and winter, which will be known for its precipitation spell? Summer is always, because summer is associated with low pressure, low pressure is associated with wet condition. Winter is associated with high pressure and high pressure is associated with dry condition. So whenever I talk about uh, other than being precipitation throughout the year, one thing I understand, when I talk about precipitation, this 100 centimeter, it is summer concentrated precipitation. Sir. So precipitation is summer concentrated. Now comes another question. Why this region is known for its semi-arid condition? What is the meaning of the semi-arid condition as a layman? You call them as dry. Dry condition, right? You call them as semi-arid. Now, what is the reason for this being semi-arid? Only one reason is there. When I talk about the reason, it is because of continentality, sir. Now, what is continentality? Away from the oceans or away from the sea, right sir, far away from the ocean, inland effectivity, you call them as continentality, away from the ocean, you call them as continentality, continentality. so only one reason is there, right, why exactly it is known for semi-arid condition, it is continentality. Right sir. Now, savanna is a grassland. Savanna is known for its semi-arid climatic condition. Up to 100 centimeters of precipitation it receives every year. Right, sir. And this precipitation is summer concentrated. And what is the reason for this being semi-arid in nature? That also we have taken it. And very unifying factor or very unique character. Once this word is given, you can say that this is savanna. Savanna is a true transitional type of a climate, sir. So one is a true transitional type of a climate. Now what is this transitional type of a climate we will see? Whenever a climate separates a two extreme type of a climate or two different types of two extreme types of the climate on either side you call them as a transitional climate sir. Right for example what can be the two extremes? One side I can have arid type of a climate another side I should have tar moist type of a climate. This is what you call them as extreme types of the climate. When I talk about savanna Savanna separates two extreme form of a climate. For example, one side, I have monsoon type of a climate. Right? Why do I say monsoon type of a climate as one extreme means? When I talk about the annual amount of precipitation, it is more than or somewhere around 250 centimeter. 250 centimeter. Right? How exactly we qualify it as? You call them as par moist climatic condition. So one side, I have monsoon type of a climate which is par moist. And another side, I have a desert which is arid. So along the same latitude, savanna separates two types of a climate. One side extremely wet, one side extremely dry. 
not only on the same latitude it separates similar type of a climate, along the same longitude also it separates. For example, when I talk about equatorial type of a climate, equatorial type of a climate is poor moist, very wet, the wettest climate of the world. Right, sir. On the higher latitudes, again it has a desert. So, be it along the same latitude or be it along the same longitude, desert separates two extreme forms of a climate. Right, one side I have very wet, one side I have extremely dry. Similarly, one side I have extremely dry and one side I have extremely wet. That is the reason. Savanna, you call them as a true transitional type of a climate. So, so completely, it separates two different types of a climate or two extreme forms of a climate, it divides. Right, sir. Some of the very important characters of savanna we have taken it. Now, what is very important is the names of savanna and their respective countries very, very important, sir. Some of the very important savannas and their respective countries, sir. See, North America, we do not have prominent savanna. Reason is very simple. If you are there in North America, tropical latitudes, which country you are there in? You are there in this country called as Mexico. Mexico is very small country. If it is very small country, I may not have this concept called as continentality. Right? The wind which enters via the eastern coast can very easily enter the entire, means continent or the entire country or entire landmass, it can surpass. Right, sir. So that's the reason continentality as a concept is not applicable to a very small land. Right, sir. So put yourself in South America. Now some very important savannas you come across, sir. If you are there in South America, where to find this savanna, at least we have an idea, but still, you are there in South America, putting yourself in political map of South America, you find Venezuela, you just look for Venezuela, the country which has the largest oil reserve of the world, you are there in this country called as Venezuela. Sir. Now transfer the location to the physical map, you find one very important savanna of Venezuela, sir. It is called as uh, Lanos. The savanna is called as Lanos. You are there in this country called as Venezuela, sir. And similarly, if you are there in Brazil, same map, if you are there in Brazil, almost Parallel to this Brazilian highland, you find a very long name, but the part of it called as Campos. Most of the book says it is Campos. Again, a very important, a very famous savanna of Brazil, sir. So, two prominent savannas we have. See, minor names I am just eliminating, and one more thing. See, analysis of the question paper says, even without knowing the complete exhaustive names, still you can arrive at the right answer. Right, sir. So, only thing is that that's the reason it means all the savannas of the world we are not taking it, only the prominent savannas where the process of elimination can be done, we are just taking it. Right, sir. So, five, six names we will take it, not more than that. Right. Always it is a beauty to keep this list simple, sir. Right. Two savannas of South America we have taken it, sir. Now, if you are there in Africa, if you are there in Africa, it is called as African savanna itself. So, when I talk about African savanna, African savanna is the largest savanna of the world. Right. So, when I talk about the one continuous grassland, this is the largest in the world, sir. Now, approximately we will have an idea that where is this African savanna. See, already we have identified this uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, where we have identified this uh, Congo Basin, sir. So, if you are there along this Congo Basin, like a horseshoe shaped structure, what almost encircles this Congo Basin on all sides, sir? Right, almost a semicircular form. Right, this is what you call them as African savanna. Right, if you are almost putting your Democratic Republic of Congo and Congo Basin at the center, right, almost to take a clockwise turn around this Congo Basin, this is the place where you have this savanna, sir. Why I say so? Because when I talk about the northern part of Congo Basin, I have tropical land. Southern base of Congo Basin, again I have tropical land. Now comes the question, why do I have savanna 
in the eastern extension of Congo Basin where, right, technically speaking, I should have equatorial type of a climate. Northern side, I have an idea because equatorial region, what lies north of it is a savanna. What lies south of it is a savanna, no denial about it. But this is the place where I also have savannas in the eastern extension of the same latitude. What explains this eastern extension of same latitude? If you are there in physical map of Africa, you have an answer for it. Plateau. Right. You increase the height, what happens to the temperature? Temperature decreases. That is the reason, slightly again deviating, we have a separate type of climate called as mountain type of a climate. So, sometimes also called as a mountain type of a climate. Call them as a mountain or mountain type of a climate. Now, whenever I talk about mountain type of a climate, mountain is the most diverse type of a climate what you can have. Because I understand normally how exactly we have almost brought in, we have just taken this fact called as latitude. So based on latitude, we have classified the climate. You increase the sign of latitude. What happens to the temperature? Temperature decreases. Similarly, when I talk about mountains, if you are there along a mountain, you increase the altitude temperature decreases. If that is the case, if I have a mountain which is located right at equator, imagine the base of the mountain is starting at equator, sir. The base of the mountain you will experience sir, equatorial type of a climate. What you experience is a equatorial type of a climate, sir. Slightly you increase the height of this mountain. So what I am doing here, it means slightly I am reducing the temperature if that is the case, slightly above this equatorial type of a climate in the mountain, right, increasing the altitude you will have tropical climate. Beyond a tropical climate, we have, we will be having subtropical type of a climate. Beyond the subtropical, we will be having temperate. Beyond the temperate, we have taiga, tundra and the polar ice caps or ice caps in general. Sir. Right, this is how any mountain type of a climate may almost occur. Right. For example, the grid what we have developed, you just increase the sign of latitude. Accordingly, we have almost given the name. Right. The reason is very simple. You increase the sign of latitude, what changes is temperature. The same logic we are just applying here, you increase the altitude, the same temperature decreases. Right. And the bottom or the Piedmont location of any mountain located in the equatorial region will be having equatorial type of a climate. Increase the height, then comes tropical, subtropical, temperate, taiga, tundra and polar. That's the reason when I talk about the ice caps, when I talk about the peak of the mountain, most of the peak of the mountain is filled with this ice caps. Right. The same logic. So you have, you call it as a separate type of a climate, you call them as a mountain type of a climate. Now comes the question. Right. Why exactly you are there in eastern margins and you experience savanna is very simple. Because here, almost I am in the increased platform or increased altitude. Right. Though you are there at equator, I am not at low altitudes. Altitude is different. Why? Because when I talk about countries like Kenya and Tanzania, sir, you are there in physical map, you will find that almost the majority of this country is located in the plateau region. Right. It is not a plain. You slightly increase the height. Now, equator becomes tropical region. Right. So, that is the reason I also have savanna in the same equatorial belt. Right. Latitudinally speaking, equatorial region, but no climate. Right, sir. Now, why we have this climate in this equatorial belt, we have justified. And slightly deviating, we have also seen a mountain type of a climate. And understanding says, any tall heighted mountain in lower latitude will be one of the most diverse type of a mountain, climatically speaking. Right, so it will have all types of climate. Right, provided that it should be very high and the base of the mountain should be located in lower latitude. Right. For example, even we say Himalayas is the finest example where this is one of the mountains in the world which is climatically, means almost diversified. Almost all types of climate you find it in, means almost, sorry, Himalayas as such. But one climate normally we do not find in Himalayas is this equatorial climate. Reason is very simple. Why we don't have equatorial climate in Himalayas? Because the base of the mountain itself lies from 
tropical latitudes. So it starts from tropical, subtropical, temperate and so on it goes. Sir. Right sir. Now coming to African savanna, approximately put yourself in political map and we will just look for these countries which makes this African savanna sir. You are there in political map. Fixing your Democratic Republic of Congo, sir. Just fixing your Democratic Republic of Congo by taking a clockwise turn from the coast. From the coast. Almost you start your journey from this country called as Cameroon, sir. Political map, you may find this country called as Cameroon. Start your journey from Cameroon. Adjoining Nigeria, if you can identify Nigeria. Adjoining Nigeria, you can find this country called as Cameroon. Starting your journey from Cameroon. Go for a clockwise turn. All the countries that comes in this list is an example of savanna. Right, sir. Let us start your journey from Cameroon. After Cameroon, you enter this country called the Central African Republic. Further clockwise, you have countries like South Sudan. Further clockwise, you have countries like Kenya. Further clockwise, you have countries like Tanzania and exactly between Tanzania and Democratic Republic of Congo. Right, sir. <coughs> Kenya, Tanzania and Democratic Republic of Congo, small countries are there. Countries like Uganda, you may find. Uganda is not so small, but still. You find Uganda and very small countries like Rwanda and Burundi. Countries like Rwanda. Countries like Burundi, taking the name is not so important, but just to tell you, examination, if at all, if they are asking, right, they may ask you the justification why Kenya, though located in an equatorial region, not experiencing equatorial type of a climate. Answer is very simple. What is the answer for it? It is altitudinal difference, right, sir. Now, some of the countries you have identified, sir. Almost taking the journey further from Kenya, you can almost enter Tanzania. From Z Tanzania, you can enter Zambia. And finally, to conclude the list, you are there in this country called as Angola, sir. Right, almost. You are just taking a journey just around this Congo and Democratic Republic of Congo, sir. So this is the place where you have the world's largest savanna, sir. In general, you call them as African savanna. Some of the countries, you take it, you remember it, that is more than enough. Now further, few more names are there. We'll just add it. Asia, we don't have prominent savannas. Reason is very simple. The place where we are supposed to have savanna, what exactly we have there, is Arabian Sea, sir. Right, if you remember, we have justified what lies exactly between monsoon type of a climate on the east and desert in the west, what lies in the continental interior is Arabian Sea. That's the reason. Asia, we do not have prominent savannas. Very minor savannas are there. But prominent savannas like that of the other places what we have taken, it is not there in Asia. Right, sir. If you are there in Australia, one prominent name is there. It's called as Nularbar Plains. You're there in Australia, physical map of Australia. You're there in the southern parts of Australia. You're there in southern parts of Australia. Like an arc, you will find. The southern basins of Australia, the southern coastline of Australia, you find an arc, sir. Arc-like structure. Right. The water body present there, it is called as Great Australian Bight. So what lies just north of Great Australian Bight, you may find green shaded region. The southern plains, you call it as Nularbar Plains. Right, so these are some of the African savannas what we have. Sorry, excuse me, savannas what we have, some very important names of savanna we have. Some very important character of savanna we have taken it. Right, sir. And what is important here is some of the names, names and respective countries very, very important. So with this, we are just concluding Savannah and we are there in the last major type of climate what is needed for the examination. You call them as Mediterranean type of a climate. Sir. You call it as Mediterranean type of a climate. Now, Character of a Mediterranean type of a climate is important and like savanna, the locational aspect of Mediterranean type of climate is also very, very important for us. 
Now comes the question. When I talk about Mediterranean type of a climate, sir. Okay. When I talk about Mediterranean type of a climate, whatever type of climate that surrounds or whatever countries that surrounds Mediterranean Sea is an example of Mediterranean type of a climate, sir. So for example, a very important, again, for examination purpose, I always say that Mediterranean type of a climate and Mediterranean Sea is very, very important, sir. Now, Number of times, formally and informally, we have come across the countries which is almost having a boundary, right, or a coastline with Mediterranean Sea. And all these countries, they have this Mediterranean type of a climate. Exception is there. There are few countries which have a coastline with Mediterranean Sea, but no Mediterranean type of a climate. Already you know what is that country when I talk about the countries like Egypt and Libya. So they are more of a desert type of a country. They are not Mediterranean type of a country. Right, sir. Now. When I talk about Mediterranean type of a climate, it is a kind of a unique type of a climate, sir. Unique type of a climate. Why we say unique type of a climate, we'll see. Because Mediterranean type of a climate, this is known for its long and drought-prone summers, sir. Drought-prone summers and surprisingly, it is known for its wet winters. Generally, so far we have an idea. That's the reason we said that somewhere exceptions are there. Right. Summer is normally known for a wet spell and winter is known for a dry spell. Where Mediterranean is, a, is an exception, sir. This exception is the one which makes Mediterranean type of a climate important. Every other climate in the world, precipitation is summer concentrated. But when I talk about Mediterranean, Winters are the season where precipitation is concentrated. That's the reason you call them as wet winters. Summers are dry and winters are wet. So what Mediterranean region experiences? Winter concentrated precipitation. Summers are dry. Dry summers and wet winters. When water is needed, water is not there. When water is not needed, water is there. Right, sir. So unique. It means this is what the nature that's the reason always we have correlated this point also, sir. For example, the same correlation we have taken it plenty of time, but still I am just insisting on this point. We also talked about uh, man-made earthquake, sir. We talked about this man-made earthquake. When I talk about this man-made earthquake, we have come across this location called as Lorca, sir. Lorca earthquake of 2011. Certainly it will be there in your books. Right, sir. Lorca, we just discussed about this Lorca earthquake of 2011. Right, one man-made earthquake what we had. Now, when I talk about Lorca earthquake, Lorca is a place that is there in Spain, sir. Now comes another very important factor, what has actually triggered this Lorca earthquake and the reason cited was over extraction of groundwater, sir. Now comes the question, when I talk about Spain, what is the necessity that Spain should go for over exploration or over exploitation of groundwater, reason, climate? Mediterranean type, right sir, summers are known for its long and drought prone nature, right, water is a scarce resource during summers and water means almost summer is the period when water is needed at the maximum, right sir, almost Chennai is becoming such kind of a Mediterranean type of a climate sir, right, so summers are becoming dry, right, that's the reason, almost it is also almost resulting in the seismic activity as such, right, reason what is almost triggered or what is the reason for it is the prevailing climate, sir. Right. Now, one very unique nature or type or very unique nature about Mediterranean climate we have taken it. It is known for long and drought prone summers and wet winters, sir. Right. Now, we will just understand that why exactly summers are dry and winters are wet and Number two, we'll just talk about the other locations of the world which experience Mediterranean type of a climate. Right, sir. Now, we'll just justify why exactly it is so. And one more thing, before that, we'll also take that it means when I talk about precipitation amount, sir. Precipitation amount. This precipitation amount is somewhere around 75 centimeters, sir. It means semi-arid. Now, we have one exception. Whenever I say semi-arid, what is the vegetation we should look for? Grassland, but Mediterranean is another exception where climate is semi-arid, but there is no grassland. Reason, right, when I talk about winter, winter is becoming surplus, right, sir. It means it is becoming water surplus and summer exactly it is becoming water deficit zone, sir. 
So the complexity of this is almost restricting this region. It has restricted this region in becoming a grassland. So almost put it very simple. Normally, semi-arid region is known for a grassland, but exception again I have Mediterranean region. Right, sir. Now comes sir, the final understanding why summers are dry and winters are wet. You are there in Mediterranean region, sir. You are there in Mediterranean region that lies in subtropical region. You are there in the western side of the continent. Almost you lie between 30 degree and 45 degree. You are there in the western side of the continent. You call them as Mediterranean type of a climate, sir. Right, you call them as a Mediterranean type of a climate. Now comes the question. Like that wind what was prevalent in a desert. Right, like that what we have taken as a trade wind, sir. Right, Mediterranean region normally comes under which belt, sir? It comes under a westerly belt. When I talk about westerly belt, what is the flow direction of westerly wind? Westerly wind, the flow direction is southwest. Northern hemisphere, assume that you are there in northern hemisphere. Right, name wind itself says it is westerly. It means wind comes from the west. Right, if that is the case, you are there in a westerly belt, sir. In a westerly belt, where if you are there in southern hemisphere, sorry, northern hemisphere, right, you have this wind which almost flows in a southwesterly fashion. This wind moves in a southwesterly fashion, sir. So it is nothing but a southwestern westerlies. Right, sir. And since we have taken this subtropical high, what is the another wind which flows from this subtropical high on the other lower latitudinal location? It is trade winds. It is trade wind, that is a northeastern trade wind, sir. Right, northeastern trade. Now comes the most important scenario. When I talk about pressure bells, are these pressure bells static? No. No is the answer. Pressure bells, they move north and south with the apparent shift of sun's vertical rays. Whenever sun's vertical rays is moving towards Tropic of Cancer, all pressure bells will shift north. But the degree of its variation will differ. Right. You will not find uniformly this equator or equatorial low is shifting. Whenever I talk about ITC is it shifting, it is not uniform because number of factors I have, land water divide I have, whenever I am there in water, I will find that water means shift is minimum. Whenever you come across land, you will find that shift is maximum. One example, sir. July, how exactly this ITC is an equatorial low shift. Right, sir. If you are there in water, the shift is not so great. If you are there in land, you will find one exception. Further, you are there in land, size of Asia, I have exceptional bend of IT season. Right, sir. Similarly, if you are there in winters of northern hemisphere, which itself is summers of southern hemisphere, you will find water shift is not so great. If it is there in land, you will find shift is maximum. Again, water it is minimum, land it is maximum. Here, the shift is maximum because it is more of continental in nature. Right, sir. So wherever I have water land divide, the shift is not uniform. So only one thing is that every pressure belt shift, but this shift in pressure belt is not uniform. Right, sir. Whatever be the case. But one thing I understand, every pressure belt shift. During summers, every pressure belt. Summers of northern hemisphere, every pressure belt shift north. And winters of northern hemisphere, every pressure belt shift south, sir. Now, imagine you are there during summer, sir. Summer, every pressure belt shifts north. What was normally there at 30 degree now goes to 40, 45 degrees, sir. Now, during summers, when I talk about during summers, Mediterranean region comes under the effectivity of which wind? The same wind which was facilitating the formation of a desert. If I talk about summers, pressure built shift is almost making that Mediterranean region to experience offshore trade winds, sir. Any offshore wind is a dry wind. That's the reason summer is known for its 
almost dry condition or drought prone condition right sir shift of pressure belt is causing the dry condition being almost experienced in mediterranean regions right so somewhere you can write it a summer mediterranean region comes under the effectivity of offshore trade wind right sir now the same mediterranean region during summers all these pressure belts will shift towards south if the pressure belt is shifting towards south mediterranean region now comes under the effectivity of onshore westerlies sir when i talk about winters shift of pressure belts takes place towards the south every pressure belt shift north during summers and south during winters right sir if it is almost shifting south during winters it comes under the effectivity of onshore westerlies and any onshore wind is a wet wind sir any onshore wind is a wet wind right sir so what was facilitating the desert or making the desert is the wind which encroaches mediterranean region towards the summers or during the summers right and winters in comes under the effectivity of onshore westerlies now what results in wet and dry spell is the shift of pressure belts so shift of pressure belts plays a very important role in determining the mediterranean type of a climate analysis of the past year's question also we have come across one statement here also we experience reversal of wind which itself is the basic definition of a monsoon when i talk about monsoon what is the definition of a monsoon regional seasonal reversal of wind you call them as monsoon one part of the year i have a southwest monsoon which is flowing or southwestern wind which is flowing another part of the year right what i experience is a northeast trade wind or northeastern wind exactly 180 degree i have a reversal of the wind here also you experience a reversal of a wind for example when i talk about winters i have southwestern wind when i talk about summers i have northeastern wind but still if at all if you are going to make a choice which is more almost qualify or i would say more which is more possible or more <coughs> suitable right whenever i use this word called as monsoon sorry the reversal of the wind as such the more prominent example will be the monsoon and not that that of a mediterranean sometimes if you come across both one and two as an option you can go for both one and two as an option otherwise monsoon you prefer over mediterranean type of a climate because monsoon the definition itself says it is seasonal reversal of the wind right sir so few aspects of mediterranean type of a climate we have taken it right sir now what is very important is the places in the world which experience mediterranean type of a climate sir again some very important places of the world sir if you are there in north america sir few places you can note it yourself and where to identify this mediterranean type of a climate you know now you are there in the pacific coastline of north america you are there in pacific coastline of north america political map few places you may identify the most commonest place where most of the books says it is california sir they given this word called as california see 10 degree to 45 degree sorry excuse me 30 degree to 45 degree north you are there in the western side of the continent you may find california right you are there in california sir so somewhere you can write california in your books apart from california when i talk about california as a state when i talk about few very important locations you may find places like san francisco sir you find san francisco you may find san jones you may also find san diego so these are some of the places where you experience this mediterranean type of a climate right sir in north america right if you are there in south america if you are there in south america you are there in central chile sir 
you're there in central Chile. Again, you can find the capital of Chile there. Another San. Now it is called a Santiago. There it is San Diego. Now it is Santiago. Sir. You're there in central Chile. Again, a place called a Santiago you can identify. And now if you're putting yourself in Africa, northern parts of Africa, we have taken it. Northern parts, we have taken it. It means countries like Morocco, countries like Algeria, countries like Tunisia, we have taken it. Only the southern part of Africa. If you're there in southern part of Africa, you're there in this country called as South Africa. The most important location is Cape Town, sir. Cape Town. And remembering Mediterranean type of a climate is very easy also. That's the reason we call it as sands and seas. Right. It means all places like San, San Diego, San Francisco, San Jones, San Diego, etc. And all seas, sir. California, Central Chile, Cape Town, etc. Right. Sands and seas, this is how you can remember. Right, sir. Now, very important location. All the locations what we have taken is very, very important. And finally, putting yourself in Australia, sir. You're there in Australia. So how to identify this Mediterranean type of a climate, you know. You're there in the western part of the continent. You're there between this 30 degree and 45 degree south, since you're there in southern hemisphere. Right, you may identify places like Perth. Perth is not exactly Mediterranean type of a climate. Perth is a transitional type of a climate between true desert and a Mediterranean type of a climate. But still, somewhere Perth with a star mark, you can mark it, sir. But more than Perth, Adelaide becomes an example, sir. You may find places like Adelaide, political map. Now comes the question. Now why Adelaide? Adelaide is almost located in... Right, sir. Now, generally when I talk about Adelaide, sir, you may find that Adelaide is almost located on the eastern side of this continent. But whenever I talk about continent, how exactly we have taken it, we have just taken one land, sir. We have taken this land. And in this land, we have taken as the eastern side and western side. Where exactly Mediterranean type of a climate almost lies, sir. It lies in the western side. If this is the land, right, we have selected such that any land, such that both the side, I should have ocean. Right, sir. Here also I have water and considerable landmass I have. Right, if that is the case, what lies, when I talk about Mediterranean type of a climate, it lies in the west. So with this logic, Adelaide becomes one very important Mediterranean type of a climate, sir. Not only Adelaide, even the peninsula what you find here, sir. It is called as Airy Peninsula. It's called as Airy Peninsula. Even Airy Peninsula becomes an example of Mediterranean type of a climate. Right. Some of the very important Mediterranean types of the climate we have taken among the means across the world we have taken it, sir. Now, four very important types of climate for examination purpose we have taken it. What is left is only very small type of a climate. Only few facts we have means we have. And almost completing this four different types of climate. Now coming to less prominent type of climate, sir. Then fifth in order, the second category, it is called as cold or continental deserts. Now comes the question, what is a desert you know? Going by the definition, what is a desert? Any place which receives less than 30 centimeter of precipitation, you call them as a desert. Now comes the question, why this place is a desert? Only one reason is there. The same reason what we had for savanna as a region. Why this place is a desert? Here itself we have the meaning of for it. Right, it is continentality. Sir. Why this place is a desert? It is because of continentality. Right. Now some of the very important names you come across, sir. If you are there in Asia, sir. If you are there in Asia, only Asia and South America has some means, almost, <coughs> the known names of cold deserts. 
if you're there in Asia, you may find it means almost cold deserts like Gobi's. Not only Gobi, you also have deserts like Taklamakan. Right, very near to India, just north of India. You are there in China, you may find this desert called as Taklamakan. See, India also we have a cold desert. Number of times we have taken this name, it is called as Ladakh, sir. Not only Ladakh, even when I talk about Himachal Pradesh, Ladakh in Jammu and Kashmir, and when I talk about Laul and Spiti Valley, sir, of Himachal Pradesh. Again, it's an example of a cold desert. See, be it Laul and Spiti Valley of Himachal Pradesh or Ladakh, they are nothing but the extension of Tibetan Plateau in India. Right, sir. Both are examples of cold deserts in India, sir. Laul Spiti of Himachal Pradesh and Ladakh of uh, Jammu and Kashmir, sir. See, this Ladakh, I am not talking about Ladakh as a range. Right. Ladakh names gets repeated. There is also a district called as Ladakh. There is a plateau called as Ladakh. There is a desert called as Ladakh. There is a mountain called as Ladakh. Right, sir. It means four different Ladakhs you come across. Right, sir. Now, I am just talking about this Ladakh as a plateau which almost overlaps with Ladakh desert. Right, sir. Almost you are there in northeastern part of Jammu and Kashmir. If you want to identify... The capital, it means at least this district capital, you may find this place called as Leh, sir. Ladakh is the district. Political map, you may find Leh. So what lies in and around Leh? Complete northeastern side of this Jammu and Kashmir, sir. This is the place where you have this Ladakh as a desert. Right, sir. Now, Asia, we have taken few names and finally, if you are there in South America, a very prominent name we come across. In South America, it is called as Patagonian Desert, sir. If you are there in this country called as Argentina. If you are there in Argentina, the only prominent cold desert. You are there in Argentina. Almost you are there in Atlantic coastline of Argentina. Now there can be one element of doubt. It is there in the coastline. How come you call them as continental? Reason is very simple. The wind which is approaching this particular land do not comes from Atlantic coastline or Atlantic Ocean. It comes from Pacific Ocean, sir. So this wind which comes from Pacific Ocean claims the Andean mountain or Andean Cordillera. Right, almost it gets exhausted with the precipitation. Now it descends as a dry wind and now it enters Patagonian shelf, sir, or Patagonian desert. Right. So that's the reason when I talk about this land, it encroaches or it encounters the wind from Pacific Ocean. Now when I say Pacific Ocean wind, then I can justify the word called as continentality, away from the Pacific coastline. Right, sir. Now, Patagonian desert you would have identified, you are there in Argentina. Right, sir. So these are the only prominent names I have with cold deserts, sir. Now moving on from cold desert, the sixth climate to somewhat it is important. It's called as British type of a climate or European type of a climate, sir. British or European. Now one thing we can say, when I talk about British type of a climate, it experiences precipitation throughout the year, sir. Precipitation throughout the year. And whenever we say precipitation throughout the year, only three places in the world which experience precipitation throughout the year. Already we have seen one, that is equatorial region. Apart from equatorial region, the second only place is British type of a climate and the third is Taiga, sir. Taiga is again a very important place. But only thing is that unlike equatorial region, this is not well distributed, sir. It means fluctuation and precipitation happens month on month. Right, a few months will be very wet, 
right? Few months, the comparatively, it will be dry. But not even a single month will be completely dry, right, sir? You also have summer wind, summer, sorry, precipitation. You also have winter precipitation. It means, sir, throughout the year, you have a precipitation. Now comes the question, what makes this precipitation throughout the year? For example, when I talk about equatorial region, what facilitates the precipitation throughout the year? It is convectional rise or convectional precipitation. Now, what brings this precipitation throughout the year? The same wind which was making the western, sorry, the winters of Mediterranean region as wet. What is that wind? It is westerly, sir. British type of a climate throughout the year comes under the effectivity of onshore westerlies. Not just westerlies, but onshore westerlies. Right. Even when I talk about the north and south shift of this pressure belts, right, westerly will never leave British type of a climate. Always it has this inland effectivity. Right, sir. So throughout the year it comes under the effectivity of onshore westerly. And when I talk about the amount of precipitation, it receives somewhere around 150 centimeters annually, sir. Right, sir. And some of the locations of the world, when I talk about British type of a climate, where you experience some of the locations of the world. One, you are there in this province called as British Columbia, sir. You are there in Canada. Again, only thing is that the name we are taking in such a fashion that where we can remember. So, British type of a climate, other than Britain, it is almost located in a place called as British Columbia. And where is this British Columbia? You are there in Canada, sir. Map of North America, political map of North America, you can find a province. This province is called as British Columbia. Where almost adjoining this British Columbia, you can find one very important historical island, right? Almost very closely connected with Indian history, also. You have islands like Vancouver. Right, sir. So it experiences this British type of a climate and if you are there in southern hemisphere, if you are there in South America, you yourself can come to a conclusion which part of South America. It is southern Chile. Again Chile, northern Chile desert, central Chile Mediterranean type of a climate, southern Chile it is British type of a climate. One more name also you can take it, New Zealand sir. So they are in New Zealand. Now see, only G.C. Leong has given the name called as New Zealand. Others has not almost taken the name of New Zealand. Right, sir. But still, New Zealand, I don't, we don't find it as a west margin type of a climate. But one thing may be, I mean, applicable with the islands of New Zealand. That is precipitation throughout the year may be the fact where at least scholars like G.C. Leong has considered it. Put it very simple. <laughs> means New Zealand, if at all, if it is coming in almost examination, we will also treat it that it is more of British type of a climate. Right, sir. So, some very defining character and some of the locations of the world we have seen which experience British type of a climate, sir. Right, sir. With this moving to the second type of a climate, that is steppe, sir. Like savanna, steppe is also a grassland, sir. But it is known for its short-heighted grass. It means it may range for few centimeters. It's a grassland, short-heighted grassland, sir. Right, sir, this is how the steppe may look like. Right, savanna is known for its tall heighted grass, but steppe is known for its short heighted grass, sir. Right. So sometimes it is also called as temperate grasslands. If that is the case, what is the name you will associate with savanna? You can call it as a tropical grasslands. Right, sir. So steppe is also called as temperate grasslands, sir. So whenever I say grassland, one thing we know that it is known for its 
very less amount of precipitation because any grassland normally we say it is a semi-arid type of a climate. So when I talk about precipitation, it receives somewhere between 25 to 75 centimeters. You can also write it as up to 75 centimeters. If 25 is confusing, you can write it as up to 75 centimeters. So we are just qualifying, we are just keeping this in the purview of almost being a <coughs> semi-arid climatic condition. Sir. Right. Again, why it is semi-arid? Again, put it very simple, continentality. There is no other reason. Continentality, sir. Right. Now, some of the locations are very, very important, sir. Savanna and steppe location wide it is, it is very, very important. Name I means specific locations are very, very important. Every continent almost they have this extensive savanna, sir. For example, if you are there in North America, if you are there in North America, steppes are not called as steppes. It takes a very specific name. It is called as prairies, sir. It's called as prairies. See, you are there in the other side, the eastern side of Rocky Mountain. You are there in USA. The latitudinal difference will be there. Canada, Canada also has a very prominent prairies, but it is not given in your atlas. You are there in USA. You are exactly between the Great Plains of Americas, the Great Plains, and you are there between this west, sorry, the western. You are there in Rocky Mountains, sir. You are there in Western Cordillera, exactly between them. You may find this prairies, sir. So North America, steppes are called as prairies, sir. So prairie as a name, you can take it. Now coming to South America, you are there in Argentina. You are there in Argentina. Argentina, this steppe is called as Pampas, sir. It is called as Pampas. Slightly north of this Patagonian desert. You have identified Patagonian desert. Just north of this Patagonian desert, you have Pampas. Right, sir. Two prominent names we have taken it. If you are there in South Africa, together it is called as Weld region, sir. The steppes of South Africa is called as Weld region. See, Weld, at least two types of Weld you may come across. One you call them as High Weld, and two you call them as Bush Weld. High Weld and Bush Weld is a known name. For example, these are nothing but intrusive volcanic feature. Physiographically speaking, they are intrusive volcanic feature. When I talk about high weld, high weld is what we call it as lacolith. Right. When I talk about bush weld is what we call it as lopolith. What is lacolith? What is lopolith? If you remember it is good. If you don't remember it is very good, sir. Right. <laughs> now, weld, physiographically speaking, it is an volcanic feature. But when I talk about vegetation, it is a steppe, sir. Right. In your map, at least, I think high weld is given, sir. You also have high weld. You also have bush weld, sir. In general, you call them as a weld region. Weld region itself is a plateau. You are there in South Africa. See, latitude is not there. Subtropical latitude is not there in South Africa. Sorry, the temperate latitude is not there in South Africa. But still, what facilitates the steppe in South Africa is the height. Right, sir. Already it is there in subtropical region. From subtropical region, further you increase the height, I have temperate region. Right, sir. So, two very important names we have just taken it, sir. And finally, if you are there in Asia, Asia is called as steppe itself. Finest example. You are there in the country called as Kazakhstan, sir. Just adjoining Caspian Sea. Just north of Caspian Sea. You may find a very important steppe. It is called as Kyrgyz steppe, sir. Your physical map. Caspian Sea. Just look for Caspian Sea. The world's largest lake. Right, sir, you may find this uh, country Kazakhstan. You may find this uh, grassland, and this grassland is called as Kyrgyz steppe, sir. This is steppe of Asia. And finally, if you are there in New Zealand, not given, so only the name we'll just take it. Take it, sir. If you are there in New Zealand, it is called as Canterbury Plains, sir. It's called as Canterbury Plains. So these are some of the prominent steppes of the world. Americas, it is called as prairies. 
when i talk about north america it is called as prairies south america in argentina it is called as pampas south africa it is called as weld asia it is called as steppe itself and new zealand it is called as canterbury plains so the very important steppes of the world location wise these names are very very important sir. and finally the last climate in our decreasing order of importance you are there in taiga sir the eighth type of climate taiga among the less prominent type of climate to some extent taiga can be important sir now taiga is a latitudinal climate taiga is a latitudinal climate so all that land that exists between 60 degree and 70 degree you call them as a taiga for the very first time let me use this alphabet north and north why reason is very simple taiga is confined only to the northern hemisphere you don't have taiga in the southern hemisphere because very starting we said climate is applicable only to that portion of land same latitude if i just talk about 60 degree south to 70 degree south southern hemisphere you don't have any land mass it's a completely ocean dominated region see minor region will not take it right sir if i just it means almost eliminating the minor region what i understand it means in general 60 degree to 70 degree south it is completely water as the case taiga is confined only to the northern hemisphere sir northern hemisphere right when i talk about taiga as i said it is taiga is com- means confined to the northern hemisphere and what is very important about taiga like equatorial region and british type of a climate precipitation occurs throughout the year sir precipitation throughout the year like equatorial type of a climate it is well distributed so among the three climates which receives precipitation throughout the year two is known for its well distributed nature that is taiga and equatorial type of a climate right almost every day it precipitates like equatorial region here also it precipitates every year and what is the type of precipitation you experience here it is frontal precipitations frontal precipitation and because precipitation happens throughout the year sir throughout the year the complete latitude the complete latitude is known for its evergreen coniferous forest sir this is how this taiga forest may look like complete latitude is known for its evergreen coniferous forest sir and this evergreen coniferous forest very popularly it is called as boreal forest sir sometimes you call them as taiga forest or you also call them as boreal forest if you remember we also talked about a concept of polar lights a concept of a phenomena which happens in almost ionosphere you call them as auroras two types of aurora we discussed about one aurora borealis and aurora australis this aurora borealis as the name was kept with this respect to this forest right sir so the taiga forest the continuous taiga forest what i have throughout the globe is also known as boreal sorry boreal forest sir right sir so whenever you have a land mass at this 60 degree to 70 degree throughout the world you have this taiga forest and what is very important when i talk about the different forest of the world that forest which occupies the majority of the land mass or the maximum land mass in the world is this taiga forest sir so when i talk about the, the geographical extension this forest has the maximum extension right entire north america that is usa and canada that is alaska and canada it also has their presence in iceland southern parts of greenland scandinavian countries of norway sweden and finland and complete russia so complete latitude of 60 degree to 70 degree sir 60 degree to 70 degree north throughout you have a taiga region sir you have a taiga forest
And taiga forest is an evergreen forest. What is evergreen forest, you know? Right, sir. So some basic aspects about a taiga, we have just taken it. Right, sir. Taiga is known for its evergreen forest. Right, sir. Now comes a very important aspects. When I talk about precipitation throughout the year, almost every day it precipitates. Right, assumes that we are almost there in a wet location. Right, because the type of the forest is evergreen forest. But when I talk about the amount of precipitation, sir, precipitation is only 30 centimeters. Right, sir, only 30 centimeters. Now comes the question. When I talk about evergreen forest, evergreen forest is the result when I have par moist climatic condition. What is this par moist climatic condition? Very wet, very wet. So when I talk about factually, any place which receives more than 200 centimeter, you call them as par moist climatic condition. But factually, yes. But when I talk about logically, what is wet? Right, what is wet? Precipitation should be more than evaporation. Right, sir, this you call them as a wet. If I have evaporation more than precipitation, right, I call them as dry. Now, why exactly 30 centimeter here is resulting in precip means, sorry, in evergreen forest is because what we call them as <coughs> evaporational gain or I would say it means precipitational gain. The same 30 centimeters, if you're there in desert, one place it is a desert and another place it is an evergreen forest. Sir. Logic says when I talk about taiga, versus desert only one variation is there sir when i talk about taiga both experience 30 centimeters of precipitation but when i talk about taiga what i understand precipitation is more than evaporation but when i talk about desert evaporation is more than precipitation right so whenever i have evaporation more than precipitation you have dry type of a climate precipitation more than evaporation i have better type of a climate so what is the logic let us not go only based on values if I'm just applying the logic, Taiga is the place where I can apply the logic. Right, sir. Right. So this, the world climatic type, we are just completing it, sir. So almost all very important types of the climate, we have just taken it. So eight types of the climate, hardly questions will go beyond it. And one fact, if, I'm, if at all, if I'm just adding it, sir, almost when I talk about 13 different types of the climate, almost all types of the climate are present both in northern and southern hemisphere. But when I talk about exceptions, that climate which is present only in the northern hemisphere, what are the climates which is present only in northern hemisphere? It is taiga. And though we have not discussed, it is Manchurian type of a climate, which is also called as Laurentian type of a climate. In Asia, I have a landmass called as Manchurian Plains. The same part of this land, or I would say, if you're there in North America for a minute, you're there in North America, physical map of North America, you're there in temperate latitudes, that is 45 degree to 60 degree. You're there in the eastern side of the continent. It means you're there in Atlantic coastline. You may find a plateau in Canada, sir. What is the name of this plateau? It is called as Laurentian Plateau. That is the reason it is also called as Laurentian type of a climate. Again, a climate which is named after the locational aspect. Right, sir. If you are just taking the Asian reference, you call them as Manchurian. Manchurian type of a climate. If you are just taking the Canadian reference, you call it as a Laurentian type of a climate. So only these two type of the climate, they have their presence only in Northern Hemisphere, not in Southern Hemisphere, sir. So eight types of the climate, all types of the climate, they have unique features. So given... The uniqueness of this particular type of a climate, you can very well identify this type of a climate. Right? For every climate. For example, when I talk about equatorial climate, what is a unique feature? No season cycle. When I talk about uh, savannas, what is a unique feature? Right? Transitional type of a climate. Desert, arid locations. When I talk about the uh, Mediterranean region, what is unique? Right? It is known for its uh, winter concentrated precipitation. Right? So these are some of the unique nature where each and every type of climate has. So given one or two almost character of a climate, you can very well identify this particular type of a climate. So with this, we are just completing the world climatic divisions, sir. Right, sir.